Freddie Laker was born in Kent in southeast England on 6th August 1922. His father was a merchant seaman and was often away from home. He abandoned the family when Freddie was young, an experience that scarred Freddie Laker for life. My grandmother went down to meet him off one of his sailings and found him in the arms of another woman. So that was it. My father, well, he never, never spoke about his father. Freddie's mother, Hannah, ran a scrapyard for a while, but life was a struggle most of the time. His mother was a go-getter and she was out of work quite a lot. He thought the world of her and had the greatest of respect for her because she had worked single-handed to bring him up. Hannah remarried and the young Freddie's stepfather was a caring presence in his life. Freddie left school as soon as he could. He wasn't a talented student, but he had big ambitions outside the classroom. I think he felt that um, money earned respect. When he was at school, people said, well, what are you going to do when you grow, you grow up? And he said, I'm going to be a millionaire. And they just sort of laughed at his, you know, in his face. And I think it was a case of, well, I'm going to show you. Freddie Laker was looking for adventure, and he soon found his dream in the sky. In 30s Britain, Sir Alan Cobham, a World War I pilot and aviation pioneer, was touring the country with his flying circus. I'm quite confident that uh, any of you who visit this play will be so thrilled and entertained that we shall capture your interest for the cause of aviation for all time. They certainly caught the interest of young Freddie Laker. He wangled a ride with the Flying Circus and fell in love with aviation. In 1938, Freddie, now 16, left home to work as an apprentice for Short Brothers, one of Britain's most prestigious plane makers. Young Freddie's first job was making tea. His career had hardly started when war broke out. It was a terrible experience for many, but an opportunity for some. He wanted to fly. This is barely the thing was to fly and be a pilot. But the RAF wouldn't accept people with perforated eardrum, which he did have. And so he joined the Air Transport Auxiliary. He cloned his engineering skills and he became a very respected engineer. He learned to fly during that time. That was not all Laker learned. During the war, the air transport auxiliary was run like an airline, and Freddie Laker was ferrying aircraft from factories to RAF stations. What was absolutely crucial was that he learned early on the importance of how an aircraft operation worked, and that gave him the absolutely essential experience that he needed in order to go on and do extremely well out of the business of aviation. In 1940, 18-year-old Freddie Laker met his first wife, 24-year-old Joan Stallwood, at a local dance. And he stood out in the crowd because he had a high, he had a starched collar and a suit, and uh, he looked very smart. But he made a beeline for me and danced with me. He, kept, he said to me, he bought a car for two pounds, and he sold it for four, and he got use of it for the weekend. At the end of the evening, Freddie Laker offered to drive Joan home. So he dropped me well away from my house, I asked and said, see, he said, after, after, of course, trying a bit of kissing around here another, which we had a bit of a laugh about, um, he said, see you next weekend. And that's how it started. Freddie Laker started dating Joan, although he didn't let on that he was six years younger than her. In 1942, they married. They had two children, daughter Elaine and a son, Kevin. In 1945, when the war was over, Freddie Laker got a job as an engineer with a new nationalized airline, British European Airways. But corporate life bored the young go-getter, and he only lasted a few months. In the post-war years, Britain's aviation industry shifted from a military to a civil footing. There was money to be made by those quick on their feet. Freddie Laker, now in his early 20s, couldn't wait to get started. His first business was buying aircraft for scrap. 
he bought his aeroplanes and broke them up to make saucepans and was very successful at doing that. He was a wheeler dealer. If he could buy something and sell it for a profit, he would. You know, cars, aeroplanes, everything was what you're going to give me, how much offer are you going to give me? And it was a game. He just loved it. Freddie Laker moved up from selling parts to trading second-hand warplanes, and his reputation grew rapidly. His big break came in the Cold War. In 1945, Germany had been carved up by Western powers and the Soviet Union. West Berlin became an Allied enclave surrounded by the Soviet sector. Three years after war ended, the Soviets blockaded all roads into West Berlin, threatening to starve its citizens. To break the blockade, the West mounted the biggest ever peacetime air operation. For nine months, you had aircraft landing anything up to every three minutes to keep this city resupplied. You really needed an awful lot of aircraft. Lakers seized his chance, borrowed cash, and bought war surplus transport planes. During the Berlin airlift, Laker planes made more than 2,000 round trips to West Berlin, carrying more than 10% of all the goods that went into the city. He had the, the aircraft in the right place at the right time, and clearly this um, helped his bank balance. At just 26, aviation trader Freddie Laker had hit the big time. But at home, there was a price to pay. We didn't really go out as a family. It was very... It, everything revolved around business. I can always say to him, Freddie, for heaven's sake, there's more important things in life than money. So I said, what is more important than money? He said, I said, love. He said, you try going down to the baker's and getting a loaf of bread with love. But Freddie Laker was about to discover the price of love the hard way. Business success was to be accompanied by personal tragedy. 